So we're talking about a case. A 17-year-old high school senior came to my office. She tore her ACL playing soccer. She had scholarship offers for track and field, which hinged on performance four months from the time of my office visit. She wanted a chance to compete, and we had an informed discussion about the risks and benefits about the various treatment options. And what I found is that it, when you really talk about this, and I give this spiel to, to all my patients, um, it almost makes the decision up for them. When we talk about ACL reconstruction, there's about a 9- and 12-month recovery. Only 60% of elite soccer players return to play at the same level. 40% incidence of OA at 10 years, 60% at 20 years. And Hewitt recently did a study showing that 30% incidence of new ACL injury within two years of surgery. So the question is, are we really that good? You look at some of the older studies with 90, 100% good and excellent results, I really feel like we really weren't getting into the weeds of what we were trying to figure out uh, with these studies. So here's a patient of mine, ACL repair with internal brace augmentation. It's a Sherman type 1 tear right off the femur. Um, I, poke holes in the bone to stimulate a marrow healing response. And I always place the, the, my, in the center of the ACL footprint uh, a, a kind of a pilot hole so that I don't slip in with my drill bit um, into my, the holes that I'm doing the microfracture on. So here now, I place two to three whip stitches in the ligament. I like to have a little bit firmer hold on the tissue. So I do one at the waist, as Gordon had suggested earlier. I come up a little bit higher. And then once I have a, a good solid hold on the, on the ligament, then I go to the back table and make my internal brace. So here we, we have uh, two whip stitches controlling the proximal aspect of the ligament. So next step is I'm going to drill through the center of the ACL footprint on the tibia, just slightly posterior, because <clears throat> I like to be in the center of the, of the ACL uh, graft, uh, excuse me, the ACL. There's the uh, drill hole. And then this is my passing suture, which I'm going to use to draw the two tails of fiber tape down through the tibia and fix onto the anteromedial tibia with a swivel lock. Next step, I'm going to go back and drill my femur through the, the pilot hole that I, I created in the center of the ACL footprint, just inferior to the lateral interconnular ridge. And then I place a passing suture here in that hole. So now I'm going to draw my uh, fiber tape suture in. There's my repair stitch. That's going to go up into the femur. And the next thing you're going to see is the internal brace. So there's the fiber tape. There's the button. Briefly, that you're going to see that goes in the lateral cortex. There's the internal brace going through the center of the ACL. And then once I've secured that, then I'm going to tie down my, tie down my suture. So, same case, near full range of motion by four weeks post-op. She started on the Alter-G at two months. Full body weight running at three months. Four months, she passed all objective testing measures for return to athletic activity. No significant quad atrophy, as we typically see in ACL reconstructions, as has been brought up over and over again in the last couple of talks. She successfully competed at four months. Uh, she received a full four-year track and field scholarship, Division I. I saw her back in my office. I routinely bring these patients back at one year and uh, two years just to see them, um, even though I had not planned on initially studying these folks. The knee's clinically stable, she has no complaints of pain, and she's still competing. So early results, as of, this, as of today, we actually have 78 patients. Um, all but four are clinically stable and back to previous level of activity, if eligible. If eligible meaning I've done some recently that aren't ready to go back to play yet. Uh, we've had one lateral meniscus tear. He had one plus laxity with Lachman testing, rehabbing post-debridement. He refused a reconstruction, wants to test it out, even though it was a little bit wispy. Uh, and then I had three frank re-ruptures, one of which was a multi-ligament knee where the PCL and post-lateral corner I had fixed with an internal brace, the ACL retore. I uh, reconstructed the ACL, and now he's back playing basketball competitively. So two or three are back to sport, and one of, one of the three is in the early rehab phase. So this is my SOS data. Uh, pain scale data shows that at six months, that, uh, I have about 35 patients now uh, of the 78 cohort that are on the, on the SOS system. At six months, their pain is less than the global knee cohort. The global knee cohort includes patients that have had meniscus tears and things that are less invasive in some cases than the ACL, so we're pleased with that data. The Coos quality of life score, quality of life is higher at one year um, than the global knee, knee cohort. Sport and recreation also higher, and Coos junior score higher at one year than the global knee cohort. So we're very pleased with those early results. So clinical pearls, I like to place multiple whip stitches within the torn ligament to get a firm grasp on it. Uh, microfracture the ACL at the femoral footprint to allow for egress of marrow elements and to promote healing. I use a mini C-arm to confirm metal button is flipped and locked on the lateral femoral cortex. Uh, I had one patient where it was intraosseous. 
Uh, ended up doing fine, healed, clinically stable, but I always like to make sure that I have that button locked, so I just do a quick shot with the mini C-arm. And take home points, some of these things have been brought up uh, by the earlier speakers. Um, the, the ACL repair preserves blood supply. Probably really importantly is you don't break that circuit, you don't break that neural circuit and you're preserving proprioceptive nerve fibers. You're controlling a greater cross-sectional footprint, of the, uh, uh, the, uh, footprint of the on the tibia, where typically you do a 10 millimeter graft, your average footprint on the, uh, the ACL on the tibia is about 13 to 15 millimeters, so you're only filling half the footprint with your grafts. So we're controlling it from a kinematic st standpoint better. And the early results are equivalent to ACL reconstruction in small series. Uh, and I think this was brought up by uh, Dr. DeFelice earlier, we're not burning a bridge. So future directions, uh, we're going to do a prospective study. Uh, the next 50 patients will record long-term stability. We'll look at arthritis, longevity and pivoting, cutting sports, and MRI follow-up.